Hey friends, welcome back. I'm Jen Sorensen. Thank you so much for joining me today. We have another spring fling video for you. We are making a soap that just invokes spring for me. I don't know if you have certain flowers that you think about that make you really think about spring that when you smell them, it just, it brings on these fantastic memories of whether it be a loved one or a memory. That's what this one does to me is it just makes me think about my grandmother, about just good memories. It makes me happy. That is lilac. So we have a lilac scent. How do we interpret that to turn it into a soap? Well, why don't we jump into the video and you can find out what I did and we'll come back here to see the finished product. Okay, in here I have my oils and I have some kaolin clay and coconut milk in here for this batch. And that's just gonna make it really nice and creamy for a lather. Let's add in our lye water solution with a little bit of sodium lactate. And that's just some salt, essentially some natural salt. A lot of sodium lactate is made from beets. Uh, and I'm actually allergic to beets, but this doesn't bother me at all. Uh, so I don't know what all of them are made out of, but it's just a natural sugar. Let's blend this up and then we'll start making our lilac soap. <laughs> That is nice and blended for right now. I'm gonna take this out. Just a little bit of blending. And now let's just do a little bit of mixing by hand here. So for lilac, obviously we are going to have several purples. And in this purple, I have a Brambleberry Lavender and Mad Mike is Pow Pow Purple. But I didn't want this to just be like a white and lavender purple colored soap because then it would look very lavender-like. I've got a lavender soap that's stunning that I love. Um, so I thought I'd add a little bit of green to represent the greenery around lilac. And that's kind of where we're gonna start right now. So I'm gonna kind of divide up this into some containers here. All right, let's see. Yeah, definitely want to be purple dominant, but let's add this green here. And then we're gonna save a bunch of white uncolored here that will fragrance up. I'm gonna put my purples off to the side. And what I wanna try and do is start with the green and the white a little bit. So let's blend this up. This is Kelly Green from Brambleberry. I haven't found the perfect shade of like greenery yet I'm still in search of it, but I made sure with this that I added a lot of pigment because I find you really have to over pigment with this one. And now let us mix up in this white here. So my fragrance, as you can tell, is a lilac and this smells literally, oh my goodness, like a lilac bush. So let's put this in here, just a splash and stir this up. Now florals have a tendency of accelerating. Let's see how this does here. Seems to be behaving okay, which leads me to believe I'm gonna be okay putting a whole bunch into my white here. Okay, and we'll save the rest for the purple. The two purples, yeah. Well, I'll add just a splash more and then the rest will go into the purples. So I kind of want to do this in two layers here. The bottom being green, which is going to represent green and white, which will represent the greenery in the soap. And this is thickening up just a touch, but honestly, it's behaving really well. I am happy. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put in just a very thin layer of white here. Just a thin layer. That's all I need. And the rest will be for the top, I think. We'll see how this looks when I put the green in. We're just gonna do some drops here. Three of these, four. Let's do just a touch more. 
to finish off the green. That's it. That's all I need because I just wanted a little bit more in there for the bottom. And I'm gonna scrape out this entire green container here. I just want this bottom to be really pretty, kind of flirty. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Like I kind of wanted it to resemble stems even though I know lilac is a bush, not like a rose bush in a way where you got the long stems or anything, but I still wanted it to have a little bit of interest in dimension. And again, we talked about this before, that the cut is always so fascinating with these, especially when you do something different or you have something in mind. Is it going to come out the way you want? Okay, good enough, let me put this in the sink. And I do want to clean up, I see a tiny bit of green drip here. I don't want that in my soap there. Excellent, I'm gonna put this off to the side here and hopefully that will set up pretty good. So, um, yeah, this is setting up, which is kind of what I want because the top, I wanna to do an in the pot swirl. So we're combining a drop swirl and an in the pot swirl with this. Let's see how this color, this is the lavender from Brambleberry. I really like this as a nice soft purple. I don't know why, it's just really pretty. And then I have Pow Pow Purple here. And this had, this is a much deeper purple and it's got a little blue tinge to it, which I really like as well. It could almost be like a hibiscus purpley blues. I don't know about you, but where I am near the beach, we have a lot of really nice hibiscus here. Hydrangeas, why am I saying hibiscus? I mean hydrangeas. I have a total black thumb, so when it comes to uh, flowers and stuff, I rely on others to help me out there. All right, this is still acting absolutely beautifully and it smells exactly like it. I actually have a lilac bush lining my driveway and I love when it starts to bloom. It just smells so, so nice. Okay, so you can tell this one's a little bit darker. The lavender is a little bit lighter, but it's just behaving nicely. Let's stir our white. Yep, we're firming up. Excellent. So I'm going to kind of pour this in. I may actually um, stir this a little bit because that white or the uncolored is, and I'm going to scoop. Yeah, I'm going to scrape all this out in both. I'm gonna use the uh, bigger spatula here. And I think I might stir this a little bit just to get all the white mixed in a little bit more, kind of make it a little more marbled in a way. All right, we're close there. Good enough on that container. Now let's get the dark one. And you can see all the purple is on top. And that's just because it's thickened up. It's a floral. That happens a lot. And that's why I want to give this just a light stir. So I'm gonna do one, two. That's all I'm gonna do. And that has set up nicely. Oh, this is exciting me now that this is kind of melding together. I'm still gonna use my spatula here to break the fall. And I'm getting a few chunks of the white. So I'm gonna stop here for a second. And I'm gonna stir just a touch. Don't need my spatula anymore. Just to get it a little more marbled. All right. I think this is looking pretty good. And I'm okay that this is very purple with just ever so slight specks of the white in here. I'm totally okay with that because I want this to look very purple. And with how this is setting up, I think we're gonna be able to do a nice textured top here. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's see if we can try and scrape out just a little bit more here, get this container pretty empty. Then I'll get you more in frame because things moved fast there. Okay, 
Let's get you completely in frame here. You can see everything. I will, I might save one of those. Yeah. Let's save one of these and see what we can do about the top. Shimmy this a little bit. I'm just going to kind of drag it lightly. I think I might drag the opposite direction too. Yeah, this is getting some really nice, soft, subtle texture. Yep, liking that. A little something different from what we normally do. Different's good. Okay, now I'm going to need to flip this. Flip it and reverse it. And now I'm going to kind of make sure when I do this, I'm flicking a little bit more. There we go. I'm going to go back and fix that. There we go. This is looking nice. So I'm pushing down and I'm pulling up and I'm kind of lifting up as I go just to get a little bit of unique texture to it. All right, there are definitely people that texture like this much better than I do, but you know what? I'm going for it. All right, let's clean this up. And I don't think I'm gonna add any glitter to it. I think it looks really nice on its own. So why don't we give this a spritz of rubbing alcohol and we will cut into this to see what it looks like if, uh, I don't know, let's see if that purple marbled at all or if we're just a big purple blob. Okay, this purple, you can see the differentiation between the two purples, but what you can't see here is the bottom. We got green. This is gonna be fun. I gotta put this down to lift this up. All right, let's lift this up. I'm really curious to see how that green looks down at the bottom because, yeah, I'm just very curious. We're at about 48 hours since I made this. So, you know, it's had some time to rest, but not too long. Eh, it's set up nicely. Come on. There we go. Oh, look at that. So you're definitely getting a bunch of marbling there of the purples and the white, but really, I love that we have that little bit of green there. Ooh, that's funky. I love never knowing what we're gonna get. It's just so fun. This is maybe quite possibly one of my favorite florals we've had so far. I love lilac bushes. I mentioned that I have one on the side of my house. There's the end, so that little sample. It's right next to my driveway and in the spring when those things start to bloom, takes everything I have not to cut them all down and just bring them inside to have the scent because, oh, so, so beautiful. It's very, this scent is nice and light. I don't know, there's a piece of me that says it's kind of grandma-ish, but it's not. It just, it smells like the real thing. I don't know. And I always associate a lot of flowers with my grandmother, so maybe that's a part of the reason, but yeah, ooh, this just smells so lovely. I am super excited at how this turned out and I hope you are too. Um, let's see how the scent goes and if it morphs and changes at all in the next few weeks, but I can't wait to share this one with you. All right, what do we think? I love that we have this white and green on the bottom and you can even see some of the green on the bottom there. And, and yeah, that's a quilt in progress if you can't tell, but oh, this smells so true to form. It smells like beautiful lilac bushes, which I have some that hopefully will bloom right on the side of my house and my driveway that I cannot wait. I love those so much. This smells fantastic. And I think the thing that I love about these kinds of soaps with the swirls is, well, that's a little different. And I kind of see a little bit of like a ghost heart sort of, but I just love that there's all these different unique things and designs with this. And if you look closely, you can see those different shades of purple, which I really enjoy. 
So like when I look at the green, you can tell you're gonna get green all the way through, but how are you gonna get from this to that? Like you get to watch this soap evolve as you use it and it smells incredible. So I wanna know from you, are there certain flowers or scents that remind you of spring or a certain memory that, you know, similar to how this really does? I will say Facithias are the number one plant that, and I say plant because, you know, flower, bush, yeah, I don't know what you call it. It's the number one thing that elicits a lot of memories for me because they're always outside my grandmother's house. And they're always the first thing that reminds you of spring around here because they, you start to see them turn yellow before anything else. But I want to know from you, what does it to you? All right, I think that's enough of me chatting. I will see you next time for another spring fling video. But until then, I hope you get out there, create something absolutely beautiful. Have a fantastic day.